Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Novus Energy conducted a two-day training exercise to ensure their emergency response team knew what to do in the event of a crisis. Our Abby St. John has more. Yesterday and today, we are conducting an exercise of our emergency response plan. So it's a live exercise where we've got both our incident command posts set up in Lloydminster office, as well as some tactical response, as you see behind me here today uh, in the field. Just exercising our emergency response plan and... and you know, making sure we have the safety of everybody. So the scenario that we're exercising here, we've had a pipeline break upstream here that has flowed into the Vermilion River and then has flowed into the North Saskatchewan River. So that is the response that we're dealing with. It takes a big team to safely clean up a spill as there are many different factors that tie into making sure the job is done efficiently. So really today we have 25 at this one location. Yesterday we split the teams between two uh, two tactical locations but uh, it takes a lot of people to effect do effective response. So um, for a location of this we'd have three jet boats in the water typically and three people per jet boat and then there's a lot of onshore activities to support their operation so it's prepping equipment, um, getting that all together Together, um, supporting on shoreline to uh, get that boom tight so the oil is diverted to a, a recovery location so we can uh, recover that product. Synovus Energy takes a lot of measures to ensure that the environment they are in aren't affected by any spill in the water they have to clean up, which was part of the exercise. Boat Canadian recovery is, is part of what we do, uh, but also too is the protection of wildlife and, uh, and you know what, preventing us from uh, contaminating other areas within the spill site. So here today we've uh, established our uh, um, wildlife management plan. And so we have deterrence to prevent uh, waterfowl and, and, and animals from entering our spill area uh, if this was a real event. And then as well as a decontamination area. So any equipment or personnel that come out of the water that may have been contacted by oil, uh, we have a very stringent decontamination process so we don't spread that throughout uh, our area. Making sure the response team is prepared for any calls is very important to Synovus, which makes the training exercises essential. Uh, well, we focus on not having this happen. Uh, we've got a lot of programs and plans in place for prevention is key, but w again, we want to make sure that we have a good response plan. So if something does happen, uh, our emergency response plan kicks in and it's critical that we, we are versed on it. We'll do various types of exercises. We'll have a combination of some tabletop exercises and like this live exercise. So quite a few times over the year in various forms, we'll do a lot of exercising. Abby St. John, Primetime Local News. And schools within LCSD held many events yesterday for National Indigenous Peoples Day. Nicole St. Tomas and St. Mary's had a full agenda on teaching their students the importance of this day. From learning about Métis and First Nations culture, students at Ecole St. Thomas were in the classroom learning about treaties. This is about the strength and the evolution of Canadian identity. We're rediscovering what it means to be Canadian and what the partnerships were that brought us here. So as we teach a kid about treaties, um, as a young, young uh, student learns about responsibility, they learn too that this is a national project to make their country a better place to be. Métis students in grade 5 at St. Mary's were showed how, shown how to Red River Jig, among other fun activities for everyone to enjoy in the gymnasium. I learned how to Red River Jig when I was around 6. My grandma would teach a lot of us, around, like Alec and my other cousins and stuff. She would love doing that. Staff at LCSD believe having this National Day is a great way to end off the school year from everything they've learned from Indigenous people's culture and prepares for the following school year. A Lloydminster man recently won a fitness competition in Ontario after losing hundreds of pounds. Our Callan Dunlop has more on how he was able to accomplish an extraordinary feat. The UFE, or Ultimate Fitness Events, is a fitness tournament that takes place throughout Canada. The event recently added a new transformation category. Instead of a normal bodybuilding show where you got to be big or jacked or, you know, being able to do cartwheels, this one here is about your transformation in life, where you are struggling 
and you got through it, and now you're a whole different person. Chris Waters, the Lloydminster resident who just won the latest transformation category, credits fighting for more than just himself as the driving force. I wanted to do the transformation. And that, that uh, to me, it's like Renee said, I wasn't about wanting to be the biggest jacked guy on the stage. And that um, my journey is not only for myself, but for all the other obese people out there. And that, you know, it's uh, trying to give hope, you know, that it's attainable. The UFE in Canada hadn't had a competitor quite like Chris before. Weighing over 600 pounds at his peak, Chris's eight-year weight loss journey was a fan favorite at the competition. When Chris got on stage, everybody that was kind of going, the old, it was like, woo, right? So it's a whole different world. It's good for Everybody that's having a struggle in life, it didn't matter. There was a 74-year-old lady up there. It didn't matter. If you had a struggle in life and you improved yourself, you would belong on that transformation stage. And that, to me, is a lot better than just being this big jack guy. The issue of obesity to Chris is enough motivation to fuel him for years to come. The big thing is, is if, our, if my journey can help one person achieve their weight loss, I won again. The pair have plans for a weight loss program coming to Lloyd in the near future. Callan Dunlop, Primetime, Local News. Thank you so much, Mr. Jace Mackey. Yeah, that was an interesting story we just watched, I'd say. Yeah, that was hilarious. Lots of running. It was it was pretty serious. That looked intense, so good for them. I know. I, I don't think I could do it either. We were just saying that. That would be very intense, and I think I would miss the hole pretty much every time, and it wouldn't work out. So good for them. That sounds fun. I thought that was a very good story. So let's kind of check out our extended look at your weather forecast now. I'll first starting off with our central zone of the provinces. On the Alberta side, we are now seeing past that 20-degree mark. You know, we have been seeing those mid-teens and even getting closer to that 10-degree mark for most of these spots earlier on in the week, but now we are starting to warm it back up. Uh, we have those 20 degrees for Rocky Mountain House and Red Deer, while most spots are just sitting at 21 on our Alberta side and then Edmonton is looking at the warmest condition there at 22 matching with us here in the border city. Going over to our Saskatchewan side they are kind of matching with us with those conditions but looking slightly warmer in uh, a couple of them. Uh, 23 seems to be the warmest condition on this side with Prince Albert and down in Saskatoon. Then we have 22 with uh, North Balfour and Melfort matching with us here in the border city and Meadow Lake is looking at the coolest there just at 19 degrees but you know it's nice to see that we all are just now seeing past that 20 mark now for today. Going over to our northern zone, they have warmed up as well on our Saskatchewan side, especially as they were looking slightly cooler yesterday. Uh, most spots are just sitting at 19, so right under that 20 degree mark. And then we have some that are slightly cooler. You have 18 up in Uranium City, while the 16 in South End and Wollaston Lake is at the coolest condition there, just at 13. So they are looking much cooler in Wollaston Lake for today. Going back over to Alberta side here in our northern zone, they are matching with us more in our central area with these temperatures. Uh, Grand Prairie and Slave Lake look like they are the coolest there, still sitting at those teens with 17 and 19 degrees. And then we start to warm up from there. Uh, 20 degrees for Fort McMurray and Fort Chablon, while this 21 over in Peace River and high level is looking at the warmest condition uh, compared to all of these spots with 24 degrees. So it seems like we are slowly rising and warming it back up just in time for the weekend. Going over to our southern zone now, uh, surprisingly, they're actually matching with us more in our central area. You know, usually we uh, expect them to see slightly warmer in those uh, mid-20s, getting closer to those 30s. But, you know, they are matching with us more in our central zone. Uh, 23 seems to be the warmest condition in Medicine Hat. Then we have 20 and 21 for most spots on our Alberta side. And then Banff is looking slightly warmer as well at 17. So it's nice to see that Jasper and Banff area, they are slightly warming up after getting, uh, you know, that dump of snow uh, recently. Going back over to our Saskatchewan side here to check them out. They are still looking at some nice warm conditions. They were slightly cooling down yesterday, but, you know, they picked it back up. They have been seeing probably the nicest conditions compared to all of these spots for our central, northern, and southern spots throughout the week. Uh, 23, 24 seems to be the warmest condition on this side. And then for the most part, uh, these spots are just sitting at 22 and at 21. So it seems to be that most of our areas are kind of matching for today as we start to warm it back up for the weekend. And now looking at some overnight evening 
expanding lows for tonight on this list in our surrounding area. We will be seeing, uh, for the most part, for most of these spots, those single digits once again for tonight. But then we have some areas that are actually looking at those uh, double digits expected. Bonneville and Isla Cross will be expecting a low of 11 and 12, so they will be seeing those double digits, and the rest are expecting a low of 8 to 9 degrees. And funny enough, Bonneville and Isla Cross will be expecting slightly warmer conditions, but also a higher chance of some precipitation later on in the evening, while the rest are at those single digits and expecting more of a clear and calm night. And looking at our hourly forecast for our Friday here in the border city, we are going to be warming up even more from what we saw today. We will be seeing those double digits right off in the morning. And then for our daytime high around our afternoon, we will be making it to around 23 to 25 degrees. So we are expecting a scorcher for our Friday because after that, we will be warming up almost to that 30 degree mark for our weekend on Saturday. So please make sure you are Drinking lots of water, I've said this before, you know, staying hydrated is a uh, top priority. Using that sunscreen, you should be using that all the time. SPF is very important. And finding shade when need be because, you know, safety is top priority and it's nice to have fun out in the sunshine. But of course, we do have some dry heat coming up. And then as we end off the weekend into next week, we will be expecting those temperatures to kind of stick around those mid-20s. And then we'll be looking at almost 30 degrees next Tuesday and next Wednesday. And next uh, Thursday, we'll be looking at 26. But hopefully on some of these days, we will be getting that 40% chance of some rainfall. And that's all I have for now. RJ Smacky will have our news coming up after the break. I'm joined today here on Primetime Local News with Robin Acton and Chris Sakar from uh, Inclusion Canada. Um, it's exciting to have you both here in studio today. Um, first of all, just talk to me a little bit about uh, the organization in general, because I know there's a lot of different kind of branches locally and provincially, but uh, talk to me about the, the whole idea and the mission. Okay. Well, Inclusion Canada is the national um, office of 10 provincials and three territorial mm -hmm. um, inclusion associations. They're not all called inclusion, but Inclusion Alberta and Inclusion Saskatchewan will be member associations. And then we have local associations like Inclusion Lloydminster. And so I was looking on uh, some of the information when I was uh, preparing to speak with you guys, and there was a whole list of different priorities um, that are important to the organization. So uh, income security, access to justice, advocating, uh, advancing human rights, uh, inclusive education, whole list, uh, health is in there, housing. Um, just talk to me a little bit about some of the, the priorities. Obviously, I listed them off there, but uh, how some of those priorities come to action, some of the stuff that um, you're advocating for, stuff like that. I mean, essentially, when you list all those priorities, yeah. what they are actually about is for people to have good, inclusive lives, mm -hmm. lives that probably parallel your and my lives. So the opportunity to go to their neighborhood schools, to be part of community recreation, to have a job, maybe get married, do all the things that are just typical. So some of the priority areas we work on because we're Inclusion Canada and we deal with mostly federally yeah. reg regulated things are issues like we get involved in employment. So like Ready, Willing and Able and I'll let Chris then tell us a bit more about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Ready, Willing and Able is our national employment program. We have, it works in every province and territory and in the last few years it's created over 3,800 jobs for people of an intellectual or developmental disability or autism mm -hmm. uh, so real jobs real pay real work all of all of that stuff and so it just sort of ties right into our mission of full inclusion and ordinary lives for everybody um, on income security though you mentioned yes. and um, some exciting new progress obviously income security is a huge issue 
because 70% of adults with an intellectual disability live in poverty. And that's a Canadian stat. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's, a huge, that's a huge problem. And so we've been working vigorously with the federal government on the establishment of a Canada Disability Benefit. And so that's been a culmination of a lot of work over a long period of time with other organizations for sure, but our federation, yeah. families, individuals and allies have played a huge role in that. And we just saw that passed by the Senate yesterday. It will get royal assent either today or tomorrow. And we will finally have that bill established in law. Now we have to work to, to make sure that uh, the regulations and all the details get sorted out over the next while. So there'll be lots of hard work left. Mm -hmm. But that will impact people with a disability right here in Lloydminster and across the country uh, in terms of uh, you know the goal to alleviate poverty. Now that's got to be a big exciting news something that you've advocated for for a long time and like you were mentioning people here in Lloydminster and across uh, the country are going to be benefiting from that and uh, what about housing? I know housing is something that's very important as well um, even if we're talking just in general for uh, everyday life of you know the average Canadian but um, how, um, job security is obviously important but uh, what's the work going on with housing or what's some of those key issues going on there? Well, we, the federal government has a national housing strategy and mm -hmm. we, we worked really hard as an organization um, to make sure there were targets around people who had an, a developmental disability in terms of create, you know, creating opportunities for, for inclusive, affordable, mm -hmm. accessible housing. Um, and that doesn't look like an institution or a nursing home or residential facility or yeah. a group home. It looks like the same type of homes that we all live in, whether that's houses or mini homes or uh, condos, etc., etc., etc. Those those opportunities should look the same with support where required and all of those things um, for everybody. But people that we support typically don't have those opportunities. Mm -hmm. They're often if they can't live at home with their parents or that they don't want to live at home with their parents anymore. They're often uh, placed uh, somewhere to live, which is not necessarily of their choosing, and certainly not someplace the rest of us would choose to live. Now Robin, you were saying um, you're the president of Inclusion Canada and you were telling me that uh, there's a long history of people from Lloydminster having um, high roles in uh, this organization. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that and uh, you have uh, Krista coming here uh, having some meetings and stuff so just talk about the importance of um, this organization here in the community and just the people as well supporting it. So in our 70 years there's been three national presidents from Lloydminster and I think that's a testament to the strength mm -hmm. of um, our local inclusion Lloydminster and our connections that are far beyond just our own community and I think it's also a testament to the culture that we have here in Lloydminster yeah. and the work that's been done and um, that we're a very progressive community. Now I know um, the Lloydminster Place project, I think it was a Good Deeds Cup, they got some money and that was able to uh, get put into um, a ex more accessible arena um, for that project. So that's something that I think a lot of people when they hear Inclusion Lloydminster, they think maybe about that project. But is there anything else um, happening locally that you wanted to talk a little bit about too, about uh, some things that are happening here in this community? Well, I think uh, I've been part of the Inclusion Lloydminster Board for a long time, so mm -hmm. I, would, I don't want to steal their thunder. They're, they're a very progressive organization. We just held um, our annual fundraising breakfast, which is so well supported by the community. Every year, 400 people come to hear the stories and yeah. get inspired about what's actually possible. So that was another major initiative. And we are working you know, to make sure our community as a whole is inclusive and accessible um, for everybody so that everyone belongs. We're a federated structure which means we're all our own independent organizations mm -hmm. that come together through membership and because we want to be together yeah. but it's the power of that working at the local level filtering up to the provincial level and up to the national level and back and forth and you know none of us would be able to be strong unless we're all strong and working together and mm -hmm. trying to row the boat in the same direction and I think here in Lloydminster is a perfect example of that. And you have people on the ground that know the local issues that are able to kind of work together and then also have that go up the chain as well, hey? For sure. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, thank you both once again for coming in. It was great to uh, meet you and talk about some of the great work that's going on. Some of those issues that still need to uh, be pressed home, but uh, it was great to have you both here today. Thanks so much Thanks for inviting Thanks very much. Us. Awesome.
Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery, downtown Lloydminster. The judges have awarded you this year. Congratulations. You are entrepreneurial. <gasps> Joining us today for primetime local news is L'Oreal and Isaiah Ford. Thank you both so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Well, thanks for having us. Yep. Really excited to have you both on here because we are speaking on this successful summer business that's happening here in Lloydminster, and it's called The Big Lemon. This has been uh, many Facebook posts online that we've seen, so we really wanted to be able to reach out and help spread the word on this. So, you know, starting off, Isaiah, tell us all about this lemonade stand. I'm just going to start off how I started. So I started with just a plastic table and things and a couple of plastic junks. So after that, uh, the wind picked up quite a bit and it kept on blowing over my stand, lots of spilling. The, the table covers started ripping. And then after that, my parents were like, how about this year we make a lemonade stand? After making the lemonade stand out of pallets, we it was pretty good. And then this lemonade day thing that came up, we the first time we did it, we didn't know about it. Then a couple, what was it, months later that you heard about it, and then we did it this year. And then we upgraded my stand to how it is now. And that's really awesome to see, especially with the great photos online. And it definitely looks like an upgrade. So that's really great to hear. Well, what inspired you to want to start this up, would you say, and have this stand for residents in the community to enjoy? Entrepreneur and own my own business. And I've, I've seen plenty of other lemonade stands. So that also inspired me to do that. Well, it sounds like from last year to this year, you're already really successful this summer season and you've already been seeing some strong support. Yeah. My friend says, like last summer, they, they came down like every week, every three times a week, something like that. Well, and the fire department came yeah. and, and supported him. Yeah. And then we've had um, city, and yeah, city, we've had police officers stop in and we've had the city workers stop by when they've been working in the neighborhood for some cool refreshment. So it's been pretty encouraging for him to, to continue doing this and not just for like a day here and there, he works through it all summer long. So on usually the hottest, nice days when we're not out doing family activities, he'll have a stand open and, and ready for business all the time. Well, I think that's amazing to hear even about the first responders that are coming and enjoying the lemonade and helping support you and everything. So what are your plans with the proceeds for this summer season? What would you buy last year? Last year, you saved up all of your proceeds for what? And everybody was really like excited to help you with your goal. Last year, I saved up for a Oculus. And I did end up getting an Oculus that with was... his own money. We did not yeah. put one single dime into it as a fam like as a parent. That was his own doing. So, well, trust me, I think everybody's seen how expensive those things are. So that's actually a really big accomplishment. It sure was, and a lot of generous people. Yeah, a lot. Well, now for people out there that may not know, we you know where you're holding this lemonade stand and when you usually sell. Where can you say that people can find you? Like our like the location would be out front of our home, uh, right across those uh, colored buildings behind the Walmart. We have a little house out here, and uh, you just right up front there. So, um, yeah, we usually have it set up there. So when you drive by on Forty First Street, you can't miss it. Well, it's good to know for people out there that you know when we have those scorchers outside, they can enjoy some nice lemonade and where to find you and whatnot. So that's awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to add that I may have missed out on? You know, for the big lemon this uh, summer season. I want to encourage other kids to join Lemonade Day or just have a lemonade stand and to learn about being an entrepreneur. Perfect, perfect. Well, thank you again both so much for joining us today and I wish you best of luck. I'm sure you're going to be seeing a lot more strong support this summer season. So have fun out there and good job once again, Isaiah. Oh, thanks for having us. Thank you. All right. That's awesome. Great to see that entrepreneurial spirit in such a young member of our community. That's all the time we have for this edition of Primetime Local News. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great night and we'll see you back here again tomorrow.